All right, so in this video, we're going to solve the following problem called string compression. And the problem statement is we need to implement a method to perform basic string compression using the counts of repeated characters. So for example, if you're given this string here, this would become this string. So what does that mean? Well, basically, this is a compression of this string where we give the character and the number of occurrences of that character following directly. So for instance, we have two A's, that's reflected by A2. We have one B, that's reflected by B1. We have five C's, that's reflected by C5, and so on and so forth. So that compresses um, the long, potentially long string into something that's possibly more concise. So the other part of this is if the compressed string is not smaller than the original string, then the method should just return the original string. Okay, so that's the problem that we're going to be solving in this video. So uh, let's get to actually solving the problem then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write just an empty string here, which is just going to store the compressed string. So it's just going to be empty. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, loop through the length of the input string. So I'm going to actually loop through the length of the input string minus one for a reason that I will describe in a bit. So for i in range length of input string minus one. And let's see, I'm also going to have a counter variable here starting at one. So inside this loop, what I want to do is I want to check whether or not the uh, character that I'm looking at and the next character are equal. And if they are equal, then what I want to do is I want to increment the count. And otherwise, if they're not equal, I've gone on to the next character in the string. And in that case, I want to just um, kind of add to my compressed string. So let me write out what I mean. So if the input string of i is equal to the input string of i plus 1, then what I want to do, as I mentioned, is I just want to increase the count. Otherwise, what I want to do is I want to add to the compressed string. So I'm going to say compressed string plus equal input string of i plus, plus the count. And I'm just converting that to a string so I can append it to uh, this thing. And then what I want to do at the end here is I want to set the count back to 1. So let's actually step through an example. Uh, let's use this string as an example just to make sure we've got the logic roughly correct here. So oops, I copied it, but then I copied empty space. Uh, let's see, so let me try that again. Right, so we're looping through this string here, right? So what we're doing is we start on A, and we're checking whether or not the current character that we're on, which again is the first character here, A, is equal to the next character, which it is. That, in that case, we're going to increment the count by one. So we go back up in the loop, we hit the next A, and then what we do is we hit this if statement, it is not true, so we hit the else statement. Uh, in this case, what we do is we append on to the string. So we actually compend on to the compressed string. That will give us a uh, character, the character that we're on is A, and the count in this case is two, because remember we started, started the count at one. Moving on to B, we check whether or not the uh, character that we're on is equal to the next character. It's not, because uh, B and C. So we hit this else condition, and what we do is we have, at this point we have A2 and we have B1. So it looks like that is corresponding to this so far. So it looks like we're okay. The one thing that we do need, however, is we need to make sure that we have this statement after the loop. And the reason for that is um, basically we're looping up to the length of the string minus one. We're going to hit all the way up to here, but we're, we're going to essentially ignore the last bit of whatever the string happens to be in this for loop. So basically this is just catching the last bit of that string. Now this is pretty hard if you're, um, like this is a somewhat, I think, straightforward problem to solve, but the edge cases can kill you. And if you're writing this on a whiteboard, in, in an interview, it can be quite hard to miss something like this, or quite easy to miss something like this. So I encourage you to really, um, despite problems sounding easy, uh, just make sure you've got all your edge cases. In fact, 
I wouldn't be surprised if I'm doing something dumb here and <laughs> missing an edge case. Um, so let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that I'm not doing that. Anyway, so at this point we should hopefully have the properly compressed string. Now the last part of this of this description here is asking us to uh, do this, where if the compressed string is not going to be any smaller than the original string, just return the original string because the compression isn't actually compressing anything. So here is where we're going to do that. So if the length of the compressed string is essentially greater than or equal to the length of the input string, uh, then we can just return the original string because it's not any shorter after being compressed. Otherwise, we could return the compressed string. And that should do the trick. So let's actually uh, print out the um, the output of these two tests here. So we'll say print string compression of input string one. And then we'll also print the string compression of input string two. So the first example here is exactly um, the example that's given in the description. So we should see exactly this for the first one. And then we can just count out the characters to verify that it works for the second. Uh, and let's see, we have an issue here. I think it's because I have a spelling mistake. Uh, let's see, I'm spelling this incorrectly. Try that again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so it looks like this string that we get as output for the first test matches, which is good. Uh, let's verify that it matches for the second. So we have uh, six A's, two B's, two C's, one B, one C, two A's, and two B's. So that looks like that matches with this compression string there. So that's it. Um, again, simple enough problem, but the edge cases can be a bit tricky. So just make sure that you keep an eye on that if you're doing this in an interview. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. If you have any suggestions as well, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments as well. And have a great day.